Not only has the internet brought an impact on collectors to purchase their goods from, but it has also incited them to share their hobby and unite. But how? The collectors tend... They do... Yes, people will tell you about the collection, what they've got. Um, but a lot of them tend to do it on the internet. They have forums for particular collectibles. I've actually got quite a few friends on Facebook. They're also collectors, and I've met some guys off eBay that, you know, they're also collectors and, you know, making trades and hanging out and... I don't know, it just it's something that just it brings me joy. I, I guess, you know, aside from having this kind of, you know, the stuff around you and you'll be able to, you know, to look at it and enjoy it and and appreciate all the detail. Um it's also the, the other element is quite nice. I've made quite a lot of friends um online and various other places who are also collectors who I'm able to interact with quite regularly and um, I think that's one of the best things is meeting really really nice people having conversations with them and, and for me it, yeah it's nice to have have the the pieces and have them around me but you know I really value put a lot of emphasis on um, the people that I've met and, and the forums that I, I post on and what I, what I enjoy about it most is um, being part of the community of collectors and uh, sharing my collection and talking about my collection with other collectors who appreciate it and uh, you meet a lot of um, friends online from this hobby. What I actually do, physically do, is I record myself um, getting new toys, new collectible, whatever you want to call it, and um, I, I review it. Like, I get it. I'm super pumped. I get really, really annoyingly pumped. Woo -woo! So why am I pumped? You know, again, I'm always pumped, so there's really no excuse. Like, I start sounding like a little girl because I'm so pumped when I get something new. That's what I do. I record the entire thing. I don't. I don't edit. I just record myself being a little girl over this new thing. I open it up. I show people how it comes. If it comes broken, then you see it broken. Ah, uh, goddamn it! It is broken. If it comes awesome, then you see it awesome. And I tell you what I think of it. I help you make a decision if you want to buy it. If you don't want to buy it, if you want to go check out another review or other pictures or whatnot. But. That's the main thing that I do. Then I also have a, a show, um, Peter Vision's What's Crackalackin' in the Toy World. Ladies and gentlemen, what is Crackalackin' bitches? What's Crackalackin' bitches? What's Crackalackin'? And all I do there is just talk about stuff I'm looking at. You know, stuff I'm waiting for. Um, nothing really professional, just me blabbering about toys, which is what I love to do. And um, and then it has it has gotten me, you know, um, Places, you know, I've been I've, I've been able to work with sideshow collectibles, doing videos for them. Um, got to go to uh, Beijing, China, uh, for the 3A show in Beijing with um, Actually Wood. I mean, I never thought that was gonna happen of me making stupid videos on YouTube, but and there you go. Woohoo! So that's basically what I do. It's kind of like a package because for me, it, it progressed into YouTube as well because originally it was just for me for collecting. And then I found YouTube and sharing the experience with other collectors and that whole package of, of being involved with other people and doing and showing my collectibles to other people. Um, it's very satisfying for me. You get feedback and sometimes it might be maybe bad feedback. There might be some people who are keen on some of these characters, but uh, you take the good with the bad really. Anybody who's on YouTube, they tend to influence influence me as well. Because originally I bought the Arnold Schwarzenegger bus because I saw um, a video of Night Slide. Guys, <laughs> go get one if you're the fan of Terminator. I mean, this is just unreal. That's Arnold right there. And I was impressed, so I picked up that bus. So it's, it's, a, it's as well, as much as me influencing people, but I get influenced by people as well, of their reviews. And I find them important as well because if you're spending, you know, three, four, or five hundred or one thousand pounds, you know, it's a big investment and you, and you need to know for sure that it's what you want. So the videos on YouTube, it, it really is a handy, a handy system to watch videos rather than just seeing static images or photographs of these collectibles. It's the only way to, 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 to review, in my opinion, is by a video. Not by a written review, I, 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 prefer, to see a, I prefer to see a YouTube video. How do you involve the use of internet in this hobby? Um, 
I use the internet to share my passion with friends and collectors. Uh, I have very limited friends that are passionate about this, and it's hard to get together and sit down and talk about it. Uh, through the internet, I can express my passion to thousands of people, which is great. And Welcome, everybody, to another High End Movie Collectible Review. You get the figure. I mean, that's the medium I, I use. And to show, okay, just to show just my passion. Right to, I mean, I've it's never started be this in the beginning thinking of I money. So much, just, just so I just wanted to express the passion with thousands more people instead of three guys that, you know, uh, that are involved here with me. I mean, I have thon tons of friends, but they, they think it's ridiculous, this hobby. Completely ridiculous. And you try to tell them, you know, and it, but they just don't understand. It's hard to dis tell, describe somebody. It's just a passion that drives you in, and, and this is why I use the internet, just to express my passion with everybody. And it's uh, here, with you here on YouTube, that I get to share it and talk about it and just let it all out. I don't think the hobby would be the way it is today if there was no internet or there was no online, because most people wouldn't even know about it, and you wouldn't be able to get, like, to buy the stuff because you wouldn't know it existed. It'd be very, very small. Because this is a hobby. And, I mean, it, it gets very expensive as well. How much do you find yourself spending on all this, and how are you able to afford them? I would imagine it's in the region of about uh, 3000 a year I spend on this. I've reduced this a lot now because I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on elite editions rather than buying lots of the, um, of the quarter scales. I'm tending to spend a lot more money on individual pieces, so it might be that I'll be spending a thousand pound on uh, a one-to-one -one bust or something like that. I first started in 2008, and uh, I was probably buying probably anything between eight or ten items a year. I've only got so much money in my bank account, unfortunately, and it is running out. So what kind of job do you have to, to afford all this then? I work for uh, a signage company and I'm basically involved in sales. We sell signage to uh, schools and colleges um, and, uh, and corporates and corporate businesses. Work, I have a full-time job at Windsor, Ontario. Uh, it's a very beautiful city, very small. Uh, it lifts up the car industry, uh, Chrysler's GM, Ford. Uh, but I, I used to work for that, uh, for the industry, but I mean, you know, with the um, all the job losses and all that, I move on to the uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry, which is, uh, I work for AccuCups now Industries, it's a great company, and uh, I am not rich, so I have to prioritize what I want. And, you know, from working and stuff like that, I put some money aside here and there, you know, I, I say I want that figure, I'm going to target that figure, how much it is, budget it, and put some money towards it work extra hours as well too. I work sometimes uh, my work uh, overtime and I have uh, my cousin has a cleaning business that I help, help too. So it takes a lot of work to get these collectibles. You know, it's, it's it, but you know what? It's my hobby, it's my passion. So that's, that's how I do it. I started in about uh, 1999 with um, small kind of one six scale um, Marvel statues, which were made from uh, polystone um, and then I kind of graduated on to I said graduated I started buying other companies products and different licenses so I had Transformers stuff and I had uh, the Marvel stuff then I sort of started getting more into uh, movie related items um, because my sort of big love is movies uh, and then I kind of started getting into more higher end collectibles spending more and more money so I started off I was spending about a hundred about 100 quid on the statue at a time and now um, I'm spending each statue is about 1500 so yeah I've really really quite scaled up oh, yeah. as my income has increased uh, down the years so too of my, my statue collecting um, habits have, as, as well have, have gone up in financial value so how much do you think you've uh, been spending on collecting oh my goodness I can I have no clue I'm sure it's upwards of twenty thousand dollars, cause um, if you look, uh, probably twenty, yeah, around that. I'm sure. I mean, you sell and get some new stuff and whatnot, but 
it's been a it's it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm I'm sure I could pay for some kids' education with all the uh, stuff I've bought collecting wise. Before, I mean, I would uh, have a few pre-orders, a minimum uh, a year. Um, but now, since I'm a student again, my funds are limited, so I've kind of limited myself to about one to two statues premium formats a year. Um, but um, you know, it's really easy to get addicted and carried away. So. Like my, my big thing I'm doing now is I'm trying to buy graded figures. A graded figure means it's put in a special case. You, there's a company in the United States called ToyGrader.com. And is what you do is if you have a min on card figure that's a really good figure, you send it to them and they put it in an acrylic case. And he's in a special case that can't be opened. Or you're not supposed to open it sealed. And that keeps him protected. It's got like UV coating. And it's so that way he, he'll last a lot longer. I have figures now that are over at Toy Grader being graded. Um, it takes a little bit of time, um, and it's also quite, quite pricey. Um, that's why normally I'll send in about 100 figures at a time to lower my costs, because you get a discount when you send in more figures. But even then, I'm still looking at at least 1000 bucks to get them all graded. Um, I probably have over at least two, maybe $3 million worth of collectibles. Do you prefer to purchase online or in local stores? I prefer to buy from local stores. I don't. I, I love buying on the internet as well, but there's a difference between seeing pictures of stuff and to actually go to the store and be like, wow, this is really awesome. You know what I'm saying? Actually have it right there for you to actually see it. Maybe they don't allow you to touch it if it's a big, um, expensive thing, quarter scale statue, something like that, but you can at least see it right in front of your face. You can see the size, and um, it's, it's just way better than seeing pictures. I do uh, both. Um, as you know, uh, Sideshow Collectibles, uh, I purchase my stuff through them, uh, straight through Sideshow. Um, through Hot Toys, I do online as well, eBay sellers. And there's some local stores here that carry, uh, here in Windsor, there's a very small store that carries some Hot Toys figures and some Sideshow stuff, but very, very limited because there's no huge community here for them. I mean, this town barely knows what, you know, high-end collecting is. Um, the next town that I would, when I go is uh, Toronto. Toronto has a huge store called the Silver Snail, and they sell pretty much everything there. So I do both, by online and at stores, yes. People are not really interested, I mean, people who know about Hot Toys aren't really interested in buying from uh, the shops. Like if you actually go into like a, a collectible shop, they, they have to, they've obviously paid a lot of import fees to get these in. So they've had to put a markup on them. I mean, if you go on play.com, um, you know, they do it as like a side thing. They'll, they'll do the hot toys because the prices they're charging for them on, on that website are astronomical. So they have to add a big markup on it. So everyone likes to either get them directly from Hong Kong and eBay or um, get them from someone who specializes in, in selling those figures because uh, they don't make, they don't mark them up so expensively. Uh, I mainly buy all my figures from a guy in, in the UK called One Six Bruce because, it, you know, when I pre-order from him, it, it, I'm guaranteed that I'll get them because you, you can put um, stuff on layaway uh, on those figures. A lot of, uh, you know, Toys R Us, Walmart, brick and mortar type stores, they just don't carry them. So you have to go to the web to get them.